Good morning, friends. It's Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church, and um, it is a glorious day. Not just because our sky is blue uh, here in Wilson County, not just because um, uh, it is a beautiful day, but because God's uh, been entrusted. Uh, we have been entrusted, rather, by God with this great day. So. Uh, welcome. Welcome to those of you who uh, join us on a regular basis about this time every morning, Monday through Friday. Uh, welcome to those of you who are um, joining us later once the videos get posted. So um, we, uh, uh, we are just glad that you're here with us. So I um, realized this morning, looking uh, through some of my notes, that uh, I spend uh, kind of um, a lot of time in the Old Testament, uh, which is kind of crazy because when I was in seminary, I spent a whole lot more time in the New Testament. That was my first experience with Christian education outside of like Sunday school and Bible studies, things like that. I went to public schools uh, all my life and um, and I'm fascinated by knowing um, the history behind uh, who we are and how we got to this and today's verse uh, I did not intend it that way but this is a great lesson for us to learn how we are still struggling with some of the same issues and sometimes have the same questions that those who went before us I mean first before us uh, struggled with God and so here's what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, read this one verse uh, for us today it's from Deuteronomy uh, the fourth chapter and then let's talk a little bit about uh, the background uh, and then we'll uh, pick apart the verse and understand why it's such an important promise for us today uh, so here's the verse because the Lord your God is a compassionate God he won't let you go, he won't destroy you, and he won't forget the covenant that he swore to your ancestors. Uh, now, when we're having a difficult day, whatever the difficulty is, now this is a good promise for you to have written on your heart, hint, hint. So, this may be one that you want to remember. Um, deeply within you because God is a compassionate God. This is what you can count on. He won't let you go. Some translations say he won't fail you. He won't let you go. He won't destroy you. And he's not going to forget the covenant that he made with your ancestors. Okay, so the time in the life of God's people when this truth and this promise uh, was spoken. Uh, this is what was going on. The Israelites had been set free from bondage in Egypt and they had been wandering a long time through the Sinai Peninsula and then as they came um, into uh, the area close to the promised land, they actually went a little bit south uh, and then came in to the east of the Jordan River Valley, uh, we call we refer to that in that particular area, the Trans Jordan, and the Jordan. Let me just remind you in the place you can find it on any Bible map. You can find it on a regular map, a, a contemporary map. Um, that the Jordan connects two bodies of water that could not be more different from one another. The Jordan River connects the Sea of Galilee. Uh, that's the central spot often um, of Jesus's ministry. He's in and around uh, there a lot. And it connects that lively, um, busy, not just with commerce, but a beautiful, thriving area um, as uh, most bodies of water um, prove themselves to be. And it connects to the Dead Sea. The difference between the two, the Sea of Galilee has an outlet so that there is a flow of water, the Dead Sea does not. Uh, so that's a freebie, think about that for a while. So the Israelites are coming through the Transjordan and have known some measure of victory all because of God's hand. What do I mean by victory? I mean they came against enemy kings 
and they, the, the Israelite army, as squarely as they could be, the Israelite army won. Not because they're all that, but because God had been faithful to them. So they traveled through the wilderness, pillar, pillar of fire and a cloud guiding them, uh, learning uh, how to recognize the presence of God. Now they have known a victory at the hand of God. Uh, and this is just before um, they receive the Ten Commandments, which is um, an expectation of how they will behave into the covenant that God has uh, offered and ask his people uh, to live into. I will be your God, you will be my people. And through Moses' own mouth, God is saying, now, because God is compassionate, you can trust this. Now, just about uh, six verses before that, Moses has also described God as an all-consuming fire. Not something that they were unfamiliar with because of that uh, uh, fire that, that, that led them uh, in the dark when they were in the wilderness. But he equates that all-consuming fire with passion because God is a passionate God. What's God what is God passionate about? About truth, about justice, about love, about mercy. And because God is a compassionate God, uh, living out passion toward the ones he loves. And he loves us all. Because God is compassionate, hear those promises again. God won't fail you. God won't destroy you. God won't forget the covenant that God has with you. So imagine yourself as an Israelite and how it would uh, have affected you to hear that promise. Because they've seen the destruction of others. They have seen armies that had all manner of supplies, all manner of uh, manpower, literally, all strength, and they, that failed them. What they depended on failed them. And now they are hearing as the people of God, that won't happen to you because of God's compassion. So let's uh, pick those three things, God, uh, and, and think about what that means. Not only will God not fail you, it, you won't be left hanging either. Uh, so this is what it means uh, if we look at the Hebrew, the root of the Hebrew words there. To fail someone means to allow them to lose courage, to let them sink, to let them drop to let them fall limp. Now, I have to tell you, when I uh, hear uh, this verse, this is what I, I think of. Uh, and so for those of you who knew my dad uh, here on earth, um, this is not gonna be a surprise, but my dad was a jokester. Um, now, his dad jokes were really, really bad, but he was pretty, um, pretty clever in the way that he joked with you in a physical manner. And one of the most profound lessons in my life uh, was this. It was about uh, whether I could depend on my dad uh, to not let me fall. Uh, we went camping a lot, went to Fall Creek Falls a lot, and uh, the swinging bridge there is still my worst nightmare. Uh, I have tackled it a couple of times, but I would rather not. The reason why is I can remember as if it were yesterday walking out to a, the middle of the bridge, my dad coming up behind me. I'm thinking behind me is the best place for him to be because then if something drastic were to happen, he can save me. And then what happened was he started to bounce. If you know anything about the swinging bridge, that's all you got to do is bounce one time and then up and down and a little side to side and I had a death grip on those cables that constituted my handrails on this swinging bridge and I had a difficult choice to make. Will I trust that even though the circumstance was not expected, I didn't plan for that, would I trust my dad or would I trust my own power? 
I trusted my own power, y'all, and I hung on to those cables. I trapped a yellow jacket underneath my right hand, and I chose the pain of that instead of trusting in my dad. Our Heavenly Daddy, our Abba Father, will not let you sink won't let you lose courage, won't let you fall, won't let you fall limp, won't let you be destroyed. That's the next step. Um, to be destroyed, to, uh, to be laid to waste, to be ravaged, to be devastated. Most of us think about that in emotional and mental terms now. And that would be the next step from being failed. And God won't allow that to happen. And God won't do that to us either. Why would God do that to the most precious part of God's creation? We, we are a vessel enlivened by God's own breath. God's own spirit lives within us when we allow that to happen. And even deeper still, see how it's going deeper, um, but also broader. God will not forget the covenant that God has made with our ancestors because he is also making that covenant with us. I will be your God and you will be my people. Now this one is the easiest, I think. Well, it's the easiest for me to understand because it's saying God is not fickle. God's the one who started this thing, y'all. God is the one knowing that we are lesser partners in a covenant relationship, and he made this relationship anyway. He offered us, it was his idea, knowing that we would have limitations that God does not, he started it. That means it's a big deal for God, and so he is not going to walk away from us ever. He's not going to throw up his hands. That would be allowing us to lose courage. That would be letting us fall limp, which will then lead to destruction. God is not going to forget who you are. You are God's. God's very own, and you are loved. I think the beautiful thing about this verse is this, y'all. This is not just a promise about what God will not do to us. God won't fail us. God won't devastate us or destroy us. God won't forget who we are and that we are in relationship with one another. Because God is a compassionate God, we have to remember that that the promise spoken through Moses is not just that God's not going to squash you or bail on you, but that actually God is already doing the other thing, and that is this. God is faithful. Never is God not faithful to us. We begin to question it when we don't feel it, see it, uh, or benefit from it in the way we expected, but God is never not faithful. And so not only will God not fail us, God will be ever-present and always working on your behalf for your very best. And not only will God not destroy us, allow us to be ravaged, crushed, devastated, God will build you up. God will support you. God will do whatever is necessary for you to be able to succeed. This squirrely army of the Israelites who were barely a, a people long enough to be able to get a plan together, had come against some of the uh, most prolific armies in the Transjordan area, and God made sure that they were victorious. God will make sure that you are victorious too. Just don't be surprised if the victory comes in a surprising way and in a larger fashion than you ever imagined. God will be faithful to you, and God will build you up. God will support you. Now, not just for your own benefit. Remember, we are a people together because uh, God values community, and that's where the greatest experience of God's uh, essence and God's life is felt, known, uh, is in community. 
And so God's going to build you up in a way that makes it good for everybody. And God will remember who you are. I know if you're anything like me, you have felt at times like I've been forgotten. That God doesn't remember who I am. Okay, I make a confession too. Sometimes I wonder if God's forgotten all I've done for God. Now that's a little arrogant. God has never forgotten. God sees and he doesn't, I don't think God gives really one whit what we've done for him. It's about this loving relationship and how I will open myself up and commit myself to God in this moment. How will I trust that he is for me? that God is faithful, that God longs to build me up and to prosper me, as Jeremiah would say. And it's because God never forgets. God always remembers that I, that you, are God's own. Whew, we're getting to know God in a new way, just like the Israelites were. They were moving from wilderness to a more populated area. That meant that they had more enemies to deal with and more unexpected um, problems to figure out. And God will give them his, ex he, will, he will enumerate his expectations in a bit. But right now it's enough for us to be aware that God is faithful. God is building us up. God is working on our behalf and God always remembers you. My prayer is that you'll write this promise on your heart so when you have one of those days, you'll remember that God is for you, my friend, and he is going before you through your wilderness into those valleys where it feels like enemies are lying in wait at every corner. And the victory is already yours. You can trust God. Let's pray together. Lord, give us the courage that we need uh, to stand on that shaky bridge. And even as we hold on to know that our greatest foundation is in you, not our own strength. Help us remember when it seems like our footing is so slippery that you will not allow us to fall that you will not destroy us and that you will never forget who we are. And because you are merciful, because you are compassionate, what's even more true is that you are being faithful right now. You are building us up right now. You are prospering us right now. And you are remembering us at every turn. Your mind is always on your children. For we are the ones who make up your kingdom. Ooh, we've done a really stinky job some days. But today, Lord, what we long for more than anything is to trust you more deeply. To walk more confidently with you. And to know that it is a good day to be a child of the King. Convince us, Lord, of whose we are, that we may stand more confidently in who we are. This world needs us to do that. This world needs to see that our compassionate and passionate God is working for good in all things. May we be cooperative, uh, and may we be a conduit of those very truths. Write this promise on our hearts, Lord, so that we never forget you indeed love us more than we could ever imagine or hope or ask for. Give us an opportunity, would you today, God, to love somebody else the same way. That will show our trust in you. And boy, do we. In the name of the one who showed us how to do all of this, your son, our savior, even Jesus the Christ. It's in his name we pray. Amen. My friends, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.